So we're going to go ahead and jump in to cell division and talk about mitosis. Mitosis is the process of making new cells and where it all began for you, you actually started um, smaller than this dot right here and you got so big but how did that actually happen? Well it happened through mitosis and going from egg to baby what actually happened is that the original fertilized egg divided and it kept dividing until you got to the size you are now. But why do cells actually divide? Well single celled organisms or one celled organisms like an amoeba actually divide for reproduction. However, this may not be sexual reproduction. It is asexual reproduction or the making of clones. So we have an amoeba here which is a single celled organism and it started as one cell and is now dividing and making two new identical cells. For multi-celled organisms or things like us, you, me, and other animals, Hey, we use it for growth and development from fertilized egg to adult. You have fertilized egg and you have this series of divisions which eventually leads to an adult. And for repair and replacement. So for example, a starfish. If you actually cut off a leg of a starfish and you have just enough of the center part of the starfish, then you can actually create an entirely new starfish. So here that is what happened. We have an original leg that is growing more starfish. This also happens in lizards. If you've ever caught a green anole or any type of lizard, their tail can come off. This helps with predation so that if they get caught by the tail, they can run away and the predator gets left with this tail. So this says that they replace cells that die from normal wear and tear or from injury. So the starfish and this lizard are probably both from previous injuries. Now normal, normal wear and tear is something that your blood cells or your skin cells do all the time. These are things that are constantly being replaced in your body. All right, you do have to know the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are things like bacteria. They do not have any membrane bound organelles like the nucleus. While well, eukaryotes do. Remember, you are a eukaryote. So prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, so no membrane bound organelles. So they undergo a very simple division process called binary fission. So they start out with a single cell with DNA in the middle of them. They duplicate this DNA, the DNA goes to opposite sides and then that cell splits. Eukaryotes have other things to worry about so they have to go through this more complex process called mitosis. And in our cell's life, okay, they do go through a cell cycle. And at this moment, millions of your cells in your body are dividing. However, the majority of them, it says 200 trillion, um, are not dividing. They are actually going about whatever they are supposed to do. They are busy being your liver cell, your stomach cell, or your muscle cell. But how does cell division actually fit into that life of a cell? Well, actually, if you look at a cell cycle, that it is broken down into two main parts, interphase and mitosis. Now don't get so excited about that simplicity because each of these can be broken down further. However, most of the cell's life is spent in this interphase. The interphase can be divided into three phases, G1, S, and G2. And if we were to actually look at a picture of the cell cycle, only this little bit deals with the actual cell division or mitosis. However, once a cell has finished dividing, it is about half the size of the original cell. So, you need to grow. In G1 or GAP1, this is the phase for growth. The cell grows and then it can actually carry out 
its function. So it can be the stomach cell or your liver cell or whatever type of cell that it is. There are certain checkpoints that we will get into later um, along this cell cycle. And if the cell passes that stopping point or that checkpoint, then it can go into S phase. And S phase is where DNA synthesis occurs. That is where that DNA is duplicated or doubled. The next phase is G2. This is where everything else is doubled. So now we have a large cell and we have double amount of DNA. Well now you actually have to double the number of organelles that you need or these other molecules before you can actually divide into two new cells. So what actually has to be copied? Well we have an animal and a plant cell here and you have nucleus in each. So the first thing you need to do is duplicate that DNA. Remember that ha happens during S phase of interphase. You then have to duplicate the organelle. So you have mitochondria and chloroplasts and vacuoles and Golgi apparatus and ER and ribosomes and all of these other things that need to be duplicated so that each new cell has what it needs to function. Once you get the inside taken care of, you have to think about what's on the outside of these cells. Well, there's this cell membrane for the animal cell, but there's also a cell wall for a plant cell. And then before we said that you had to copy organelles and other molecules. Well, what exactly are these other molecules? Well, we've been talking about cell respiration and photosynthesis and protein synthesis and all of these other things. Well, all of those things require enzymes. So, in order to have a functioning cell or two new cells, these cells also need those enzymes that allow them to make proteins or allow them to carry out those cellular functions that we've been talking about. Right, to, in order to duplicate DNA, well you have the cell which is the blue part here and the nucleus in the green and then you have DNA. Normally DNA is like a squiggly mass of DNA here but once they condense they form chromosomes. And if we actually used to spread these four out, you end up with four single-stranded chromosomes. Once you duplicate the chromosomes, that is where you actually start to see that X pattern that most of us are used to seeing. And you end up with four double-stranded chromosomes. So you go from a single strand, you duplicate it, and you actually end up with a double strand. So you have one, two, three, four double-stranded chromosomes. All right, so back to the cell cycle and those phases. You started with interphase, where that cell copies DNA in S phase of interphase. And there we go, we've copied our DNA. And then we can go on to prophase. Prophase is the first actual phase of mitosis. This is where you go from this mass of tangled DNA to very nicely wound DNA and this is where they start to be called chromosomes. And we will talk about how DNA is wound up into chromosomes um, later and it is actually pretty interesting. This is also where we can start seeing it under a microscope. So here we have double-stranded DNA. This is, this is actually human chromosomes so we have half of a chromosome here and half on the other side. And notice this is for each chromosome. So here's a chromosome, here's a chromosome. Okay. Right, so after prophase, you go to metaphase. So this is where things line up in the middle. So M is for middle. And as you can see, our chromosomes in our cell are lined up here in the middle. And we have our centrioles. These are what actually create spindle fibers. Now here it says attached to protein cables. These cables are called spindle fibers. These spindle fibers are created by the centrioles and attached to the center of the chromosomes. Well, 
once they've lined up, they can start to be pulled away. So we have metaphase to anaphase. Anaphase, or A is for away, the chromosomes separate and they move away from each other. These spindle fibers shorten, pulling those half of the chromosomes apart. And the final stage, or one of the final stages of mitosis, is telophase. This is where the cell actually starts to divide. And you can see that the nuclei have formed again. So we have almost two new cells, but they are still slightly attached. And ironically, this is called the cleavage furrow. So this is where the cell has start to pinch in, but is not completely divided. The actual final stage of mitosis is cytokinesis. This is where the cells are completely separated and the DNA is unwound. So these are now two new skin cells or whatever type of cells and they are going to be doing whatever they are required to do. It is important for you to know that in mitosis you get two exact copies of the original. It has the exact same DNA. Basically they're clones. So if we start with an original cell, you end up with two daughter cells. So in an animal or a fish cell here, we have interphase where you cannot see the DNA, prophase where the chromosomes are starting to be visible with the centromeres or the uh, centrioles on those two opposite ends creating those spindle fibers. Here you have metaphase where it's lined up in the middle, anaphase where they've started to separate and are being pulled to opposite ends of the cell, telophase you can see that the cell is starting to pinch in here and here, and the chromosomes are almost to the center of these two new cells, and then telophase, this is where the two new cells have basically formed and you can see that the DNA is starting to unwind. An animal cell versus a plant cell. This is what we will actually get to look at in the lab. This is an onion root tip. And you can see this might be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and maybe a telophase here. Or here, the cell is not completely divided and yet we can see that there, there are almost two new cells. So just a quick overview of the cell cycle. You have interphase, remember this is the longest phase of the cell cycle. You have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now this here is actually called pro-metaphase. It is an intermediate between prophase and metaphase. And at the end of telophase you have cytokinesis. This is where the cell actually splits. Some easy ways to remember this is PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then you have to add a few extra letters on the ends. Or you can say, please make another two cells. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. These are the five steps of mitosis. And you have to remember that after this, it goes back into interphase, so G1, S and G2. So if you have any questions, please ask me in class or you can email me.